Greetings fellow comic fans and welcome to a very special video. Today I'm going to be discussing the comics and other various items I picked up during my trip to Heroes Con, its 35th anniversary in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is a video series that's going to be very sporadic. I am figured it'd be fun just to kind of show off some of the things I pick up at various conventions and maybe like holidays or other savings deals like a Black Friday kind of thing. And plus, I mean, ideally, if, you know, a listener or two happens to, you know, pick up stuff from the same place, we can maybe share our stuff. So I'm just going to get right into it. It's just going to be a really simple, off-the-cuff kind of thing, a little bit different than how I'm going to do my reviews. So I guess just know that up front if it's, you know, not quite as uh, eloquent, I guess. So anyway, we are going to get started with some of the books, and we will work our way up. Uh, to some of the other items, because this was actually one of the more diverse uh, hauls I've had in quite some time. So for starters, oh wait, actually one other small thing, because I'm just going to bring this up. Uh, so I'm just going to be showing you <clears throat> photo stills, because I'm not a fan of recording in webcam videos unless I have to. Uh, it's just a lot easier for me to do when it's in audio. So because of that, I have my buddy take some very nice high-res stills of most of the things I picked up. There were a couple of things that weren't shot like that. The ones that don't look quite as good were taken from my phone, purely because there, we just didn't have enough time to uh, get all the photos of everything before we left from Charlotte. So, yeah, just know that up front, but now that we have that out of the way, let's get started, shall we? The first item I picked up was American Monster Volume 1. Aftershock had their own little booth, and I uh, picked up a few things from them. I'm sure they will come up in a second, but for starters, American Monster Volume 1, written by Brian Azzarello, art by Juan Doe. Juan Doe was there, I just didn't uh, track him down at his booth during the convention. Honestly, I picked it up because I'm a big Brian Azzarello fan. I love Hunter Bullets, his Wonder Woman run, and a few other things, so yeah, I, I couldn't you know, resist it. I got for 15 bucks cover price, but I have a feeling it's going to be well worth it. Next up, as far as comics go, I got Black Holers Issue 1 from Ben Templesmith. It's apparently a Patreon project that he's working on at the moment, and eventually he's going to have out in trade form. And I think apparently it's an exclusive to his Patreon. I don't think this has been in comic shops. I mean, I worked at a comic shop for about a year in 2015 and the 16, I didn't see this anywhere, so I'm pretty sure it's an exclusive. And I like Ben Templesmith, so I figured I'd give it a shot. I wound up uh, picking it up for around, I think it was 20 bucks, and I forget how many pages it came with, but I just wanted to support Ben Templesmith because I'm a fan, and I didn't have anything else really to get signed from during the uh, trip. Next up we have Deadly Class Volume 5, which... I can't wait to read this, to be perfectly honest, because without going into spoilers, the way Volume 4 ends is just this massive, where do you go from here? Uh, it's a huge, mind-blowing kind of ending, and I'm very curious to see where Remender decides to take this from here, because, I, I mean, that might have been an ending, but now we have Volume 5, so we will check it out and see uh, how that goes. Next up is Defenders Volume 2. Now, I kind of goofed with this, admittingly, but it is uh, Matt Fraction, as a writer, has various artists, as you'll see on the cover. But the big attraction for me buying this, and you'll see why I failed pretty quickly, is I picked up because it's a Matt Fraction comic. Matt Fraction's there. It's also a Terry Dotson comic. And what do you know, Terry Dotson's also at Heroes Con. So I was going to look around for Volume 1 to try and get that so I can get them both signed. I couldn't find Volume 1 there, unfortunately. I picked this up for 5 bucks, and I was thinking, well, you know, Volume 1's got to be around here somewhere. No luck, unfortunately. So I just decided, you know what, I'll just wait for some other time. I might not ever meet Dots and Refraction again, but it just felt kind of weird just getting Volume 2 signed. Like, that's probably my OCD kicking in, but I don't know. Next up, uh, from the same booth, I believe was Doom War, which was kind of one of those books of Marvel that was an event, but was kind of going on 
at the same time as like the real event of the time which might have been siege maybe or secret invasion not exactly sure i did remember reading this uh, a couple years back i think i even did a review on it way back in the day and i remember enjoying this immensely it was here for five bucks so what the hell i figured i'd pick it up back to aftershock we have dreaming eagles the hardcover now what's special about this one and as long as I remember to, well, I don't necessarily need to show a photo for it. It's nothing really special. But what's cool about it is that this is was a New York Comic Con exclusive cover. Or, no, it's not an exclusive cover. My bad. It's an exclusive hardcover, which was signed by Garth Ennis. It was retailing, apparently, at NYC for 75 bucks, And they were cutting it down to 50 and since the odds of me meeting Garth Ennis is pretty much slim to none at this point, I figured I like Garth Ennis' work, and I hear he does amazing World War II stories. So I might as well give this a shot. I, I think I read the first issue a while back, and it looked excellent. A little pricey, mind you, for the signature, but I'm a big Garth Ennis fan, and I'm sure it'll be great. Next up, and this is where things will kind of start to go off the rails a little bit, when I said diverse, I also should have mentioned that this was probably the priciest Comic-Con I've ever been to, and it's all my fault, not the people. There were some great deals there, and I decided to take advantage of them because I had a little extra income at the time. And this is one of the first ones. It is Fantastic Four Omnibus by Matt Fraction, Mark Bagley, and Mike Allred, amongst a couple other people. And it was going for 30 bucks, And I was not going to say no to that because this has been a run that I was interested in checking out for quite some time now. And for 30 bucks, that's a hell of a deal for two different series collected in a nice little hardcover. And uh, plus, it kind of got the Matt Fraction seal of approval when I got him to uh, sign it. He was impressed because it was uh, collected in the correct order, which um, you would think would be kind of standard when it comes down to like big two hardcovers. But... A while back, there was a controversy with Orion where, like, certain things were jumbled up in the wrong order. So, you can never be 100% certain. So, it was just kind of nice to see the creator himself, you know, the writer himself, Matt Fraction, kind of approve of the omnibus. So, awesome. Another omnibus I picked up was the Golden Age of Captain America Omnibus Volume 1. And this one was going for 35 bucks, and I wanted some more Jack Kirby comics. That's pretty much the main reason I picked this up. Plus, I love Captain America. He's an awesome hero. So, 35 bucks for that one. Moving on to the next one. And this is kind of me being an idiot again, just as a heads up. So, on the front, it looks like I bought the House of M hardcover. And I did, but I bought the tie-ins for House of M. And that kind of uh, bummed me out because I've heard pretty good things about House of M. I saw the hardcover there and I was like, oh, cool. For 12 bucks, that's a really good deal. I think it was like eight issues in the trade. So it's like fantastic deal. But then I found out it was the tie-ins and it's like, okay, well, this could still be interesting because the premise of the uh, tie-ins were that um, apparently Scarlet Witch alters reality to give everyone what they wanted. And everyone kind of lives a happy existence. So it'd be kind of curious to see how some of the tie-ins would reflect the uh, inner wishes of the heroes of the Marvel Universe. So it could still be worthwhile. I'm just going to have to track down the original you know, hardcover for House of M now because I thought this was it. But uh, not the case. Another omnibus we have is the Invincible Iron Man omnibus by uh, Kurt Busiek and uh, Sean Chen. And this is another one I've been eyeballing for a while. Um, I have been pretty fascinated by Iron Man since I read Len Kaminsky's run on the book. And I think this is like the next big run to follow it up because there are some weird shenanigans in between these two writers. But I've heard some pretty good things. I like B6's run on Avengers, so I was bound to give his Iron Man stuff a shot. I got it for 35 bucks when it retails for 125 so that's uh, quite a bargain for me. I couldn't really turn that one down. You kind of seeing how this is getting pricey yet? Uh, I haven't even gotten to the worst stuff, but this is uh, where it's starting to really go off the rails. The first 
omnibus of uh, David McElhinney, Bob Lane, and John Romita Jr.'s Iron Man. This was in the early to mid-70s, I believe. And this is kind of the run on Iron Man that is what defined the character. This is the run that brought up uh, Demon in the Bottle and various other things that kind of made Iron Man into the character that, you know, Marvel's known and loved for, I don't know, 30-something years before the Downey version came out and kind of changed that up a bit. And I got this one for 70 bucks, and unfortunately for this one, what's really dumb is I had to pay for this one twice. Not at the convention, but a while back I bought a copy of this on Amazon, and I got kind of gypped, and I wasn't able to get a replacement copy. So I found this here, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to buy it a second time because I've been having issues with my post service lately, and it's like, okay, well, since it's here, I'll just grab it. So that one was 70 bucks. I believe it was a $100 omnibus, maybe 125 but I couldn't pass it up since it was there. Okay, and next up we have Red One Volumes 1 and 2 for the hardcovers. They are special oversized editions, and I got this because I met Terry Dodson at his booth, and he was a very nice guy to chat with, and I figured, okay, I'll give his series a shot. For a while, I thought he was actually the writer and artist on the book, but it turns out there was another writer whose name I'm not quite remembering at the moment. But I like Terry Dotson's art style, and I figured, okay, well, him on an image book should be a lot of fun. So we'll see what happens when I give it a read. Oh, and he also did a cool little remark inside my book, just a nice little doodle. I may post that as well if I remember, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll remember to post that up. Okay. Next up, and it's the last omnibus I picked up, I swear. Like, uh, this is my fifth one, and I swear this is my last one. It killed me. Uh, <laughs> it killed me carrying this thing back to the hotel, but it was well worth it. Uh, this is the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Complete Collection omnibus, which was done by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Jim Steranko. I've heard great things about it. It was going for 45 bucks, as you can see on the side there. So... I kind of want to read me some old school S.H.I.E.L.D. and not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.-like stuff, so let's see what happens. And, okay, so there are a couple other books left. Uh, next one is Seven to Eternity, Volume 1, written by Rick Remender, art by Jerome Opeña. I have no idea what this book's going to be about, but I like Rick Remender for the most part. When he's on fire, he is on fire. And Jerome Opeña is a phenomenal artist, so this is bound to be a great book. I got it for 10 bucks off the image boost, so I think it's going to be well worth it. This next one's going to be pretty interesting. It's called Solid State, and it's a book that Matt Fraction worked on alongside an album also, I believe it was called Solid State as well. And apparently it's supposed to be a companion piece to it, but I guess you can read it without listening to the uh, album, but you probably should. I picked this one up for 50 bucks at the time. It's a big, good size hardcover. It's going to be kind of, not quite 300 size wide, but pretty close. And I got a nice little signature, a little, little doodle there. I, I may post that one, but there's a cooler fraction doodle that uh, I may post too. I, I'm not sure. Next up is Spider-Man Wolverine hardcover by Zeb Wells and Joe Madeira. I technically own half of this, but it was already for like four bucks anyway, and it was collecting Avenging Spider-Man and Savage Wolverine, I think that was what it was called. And basically they're just anthology style stories with Spider-Man and Wolverine teaming up with various people. I like Joel Madeira's art in the Savage Wolverine story I read, and I figured might as well own the other one at this rate since I enjoyed that one. No real thought put into that one. I'm sure I could probably read through that and review them a couple minutes, but like I said, should be fun. Next up is Stray Bullets, Volume 6. I love this series to death, but I could not find 3 through 5. But since I had 6 there for 5 bucks, I figured what the hell. I love Volumes 1 and 2. I know I'm going to collect up to 6. I don't normally do that as a force of habit in case a series goes off the rails, but... I have a feeling that's not going to happen with this one. After that, we have The Violent by Ed Brisson, Adam Gorman, and, or sorry, Adam Gorham, 
and Michael Garland. And the violent is actually a uh, spoiler what I'm going to be talking about next with my review series. So I will keep this one light. I met Ed Brisson and Michael Garland. Both were really nice to chat with and it just seemed like a cool little something to read and review. So look forward to seeing that later this week. And finally, after a long delay, uh, I finally picked up some more volumes of Ultimate Spider-Man. I believe that these are the last three trades of this volume. It gets kind of weird after this, because apparently after the Ultimatum trade, they then renumbered it for a bit, but then apparently renumbered it back to 150, but then they counted it wrong apparently. So then they did a real 150, and then we get into the Miles Morales stuff, which is a whole other set of collections. So no idea how complicated this is going to get after these series of trades, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens when I dig into them. I read 19 recently, and that was, uh, I don't know, uh, the, it was kind of weird about Mark Bagley, so I'm in for some adjusting with this series going forward. And I picked up each one of them for 5 bucks, so that's also why I did it. Okay, and we also have Wicked and Divine Volume 5. No one else was uh, there for this one. Like, it wasn't like uh, Gillen and McKelvey, who I met C2E2, but uh, Wicked and Divine Volume 5, I've loved the series from pretty much the beginning, and it also kind of had a, an ending not quite like Deadly Class. It, it did have an ending like Deadly Class from like, okay, well, I guess you can do anything from here. But it wasn't quite the same, like, um, Deadly Class, I, I still think, has probably one of the ballsiest endings I've seen in an image book in quite some time. Uh, but this one I picked up for $16.99. I'm looking forward to digging into it, and I think that's the last of the trades. Oh, wait, there's one other uh, thing of books. Uh, just really simply put... For American Comic Book uh, Chronicles, that that was the next series of hardcovers I picked up, and basically that is from Tomorrow Publishing. Uh, I was like looking over at the pamphlet. Actually, after looking at the pamphlet, I need to correct myself. It's actually Two Moros: The Future of Comics History, and as that uh, subtitle implies, these are books about the American comic book history throughout the decades. They had one in the 1950s, and they went as far as the 70s. Apparently the 80s sold out, but I'm going to wait for that one to go back into print. I decided to pick up the 1960s, which came in two books, uh, 1960 and 1964, and then 65 to 69. And then they had just one covering the entire decade of the 70s. So I tend to be fascinated by comic book history, and I would be really curious just to kind of dig through these and see like all the crazy stuff that I don't even know about from comics history and I feel like I'm pretty well inundated with it at the moment but I'm sure they've dug into so many other corners that I never even thought to look at and they're probably going to also cover not just Marvel and DC but also the indies of the time so like I said I'll be curious to check those out uh, normally they retail for $41.99 but in this case it was a 30% off uh, discount for you know, your entire purchase, so I wound up getting those for 30 bucks, roughly. It, it amounted to something like 91 or 92 bucks total, so not, not too bad of a deal. They're really nice hardcovers when you see them in person, but I'm looking forward to digging into those. So now we're going to get into some miscellaneous stuff real quick. Uh, two cheap things I picked up. They're not cheap like bad, but they looked pretty nice. First off, I picked up a, uh, mini Black Widow statue for 30 bucks, since Black Widow is my favorite female Marvel character. That looked awesome, and it is now comfortably sitting on my wall. I may include that in this video as well, as long as I remember once again, so no promises there. But I just kind of have it on top of my comic collection, uh, one of my shelves, because I don't really have like a, like a tray or anything for these things. Like, I don't know. I, I'm limited on space at the moment. So maybe I shouldn't have picked those up for spacing reasons alone. But I lucked out, I think. Uh, I found a, a nice little spot since it's not too big. Another bust I picked up was for Captain America. 
And this one I got for 35 I believe. And it's cool. I just figured it, it looked pretty nice too. And I don't know, like a cool little Captain America thing for 30 bucks. I'm sure it costs more normally if I were to go to like a comic shop and buy that same thing. So it seemed like a good deal at the time. Okay, so now we're going to get into my commissions. And this is kind of where things really went off the rails. Not in like a, I spent more money than I could afford. It's just... I found some great deals and I couldn't help myself and no regrets. That was kind of the whole point of the trip was to have some fun, so I had some fun with this. So before the convention I decided to contact a few creators about getting some commissions and here are the ones that I took home with me. Uh, I believe, trying to think of how many I got done total. Out of the ones I'm showing you, there are two that are currently pending. Uh, one was not completed by the time I showed up, so it's going to get mailed to me. And then there's another one where I paid for it in advance, but it's probably not going to get done uh, for a little bit of time, which is okay. He's basically just going to drop it off to me in person since we actually happen to live in the same area, so that's kind of cool. So the first one that I picked up was Black Widow by Jeff Isherwood. And this is a 12 by 18 watercolor, and damn, I'm, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I kind of gave him a choice between Colossus or Gene Colon era Black Widow, and he wanted to do Black Widow, so more power to him, especially when he included the uh, headshot on top of the full figure. It's like, okay, you didn't have to do that level of detail, but the fact that you did, I kind of had to pay him a little extra because... That dude really worked his ass off for it, and I think it shows. I'm really happy with how that one turned out. The total I dropped on this one was 390. Yeah, uh, it was a 390 for the entire thing, which was an absolute steal. I'm more than thrilled with how this one turned out, and now I got to figure out where to put it on my wall because uh, I definitely need to frame that up very soon. The nearest other one I have up is. The last com commission I was able to pick up at the con, which was Captain America by Steve Epting, just a quick little headshot, which was the only thing he was offering for the convention. I think he was doing sketch covers, but I'm not a big sketch cover person, so I was fine with a, a head sketch from him. But I didn't think I was going to get it. I got really lucky here in that he was only going to be there Saturday and Sunday. And I get there pretty early on Saturday, and they let us in for the uh, people who bought their tickets in advance a half hour early. So I was thinking, okay, well, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to be able to get in line and get something from them. And even with all of that, there's still a dozen people ahead of me. I'm kind of aware that like his style is pretty detailed, so I wasn't sure if I was going to get this commission. Like Even when I got on the list, he told me up front, I'm not sure if I'm going to you know, be able to get to you because there's a bunch of people in line already. And I told him I understood. It's not a big deal if he if he couldn't, no harm, no foul. And especially since he didn't take my money up front, basically how it would work is that when he finished it, you give him the money and then you get the piece. So that was a pretty fair deal for me. And originally on Sunday, because we were going to have to leave early to try and beat out on traffic, I was, you know, going into his line to tell him, well, you know, I'm probably not going to be able to stay out for the uh, entire show, so you might as well, you know, just take me off the list. And he's like, no, 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 I can fit you on there. So I, I come back about eh, maybe like three hours later, around like 1.30, give or take. And lo and behold, here it is. He finished it for me real quick, and I'm really turned out great. I'm really thrilled with how that one uh, went and plus he was just such a joy to chat with. Um, if you ever get the chance to talk with Steve Epting, he's a great guy. I do highly recommend it. So lucky break there for that one. Let's see what else we got. Sorry, I got to go through some of these real quick. Okay, so the next one I have is Psylocke by Cameron Stewart. And this was one of these ones where I was conflicted on whether or not I was going to get a commission from Cameron Stewart at first, if I'm going to be completely honest. How he did his was he opened up his uh, commission list on Stone Envy. And there, I don't think he even had a number of slots. Like, um, I got one from Babs Tar, which isn't uh, here yet. It's going to be mailed to me. That was the one I was referring to. 
but for Cameron Stewart, I don't think there was actually like a set number. But the thing was with his, for a waist-up shot generally, it was going to run about 400 bucks, which at the time, I was just thinking, okay, well, you know, he's a great artist, but that's, that is kind of a lot of money, so I'm not sure about that. But then like a day or two later, I saw him post like this amazing death commission for Heroes Con. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to get a commission from him. And I gave him a choice between Huntress, uh, a specific version of Huntress that I like from uh, Huntress Year One, or Psylocke, the uh, 90s version. And he chose the Psylocke for the 90s version. And personally, I think he knocked it right out of the park. Like, just gave me a great amount of detail. And he even gave me, he didn't have to do this since he said waist up, but he did give me a little bit of, bit of the legs too, just for the stripe design. So that was nice of him to do. And... I'm really happy with how that one turned out. He was also really nice to chat with. So if he ever does show up for a convention that you're at, I do recommend that as well. Let's see. Next up. Sorry, i got to go through a few of these in order to get to it. So the last commission I picked up was actually at an art auction. And it was a Wonder Woman by Ramon Villalobos. And there's a funny story behind this. And I'll just keep it brief because... I'm already rambling, and I knew this was going to happen, but I was trying to keep it down, so I'm going to try and keep it to, uh, I'm going to try and keep it to like 33 minutes. We'll see how I do with this. So, for the art auction, I was able to win this piece for $225, which was the second lowest at the auction. And I'm really proud of that because after this, um, basically... There were about three to five people where if they bid it on anything after this, they were pretty much going to win, which I can understand because, hey, you have the money to do it, so good for you. But I guess it would be kind of frustrating for everyone else when it's like, okay, you're trying to win this piece of uh, art, but, you know, no matter what, you're not going to be able to beat that guy in terms of money to, you know, get that piece that you really want. Or if you do, you're really going to be in some bad shape because, like, some of those pieces, oh, dear. There were some pieces that went for two or three grand, and it's like, I could beat someone for that. I could, but no, I, I you know, I, I restrain myself for that. I'm like, no, don't, don't be that crazy. It's not, it's not worth it for me personally to go in deep that far just to win something like that. But fortunately, I didn't have to for this piece. I'm really happy how it turned out. I even chatted with the artist the next night, and he was a... Uh, kind of surprised I won it for that low, so <laughs> he was joking I should uh, give him a little extra of a tip, but fortunately, you yeah, know, he was just kidding. So it was a great little piece. I'm really happy with that one. Just for the two commissions, maybe at some point I'll post them up at another time, but I am getting a Babs Tar X-23 commission, which I'm really looking forward to, and Andrew Day is going to be doing Giant Man for me. Because he has these 18 by 6 thin strips that he does his art, his artwork on. And it's gorgeous stuff. You should definitely check it out. But I figured it'd be really cool to see him do a giant man transformation. And he seemed to be into it. So whenever I have those, I will post them, talk about them, and we can discuss that a bit more. And probably just at the end of this, just as the last, you know, maybe 20 seconds or so, I'll just kind of post some of the remarks at the end and uh, some of the little, you know, fun little signatures that, like, Fraction or Francavilia, Francesco Francavilia left for me. Basically, everyone I met at the convention was more than generous with their time and fantastic. Um, also, big shout-outs to Jim Shooter for being a stand-up guy. Did a great panel and was nice to chat with. There was also, I'm trying to think of someone else who I chatted with, uh, Jason Aaron, I finally got to get my scalp trade signed by him, which, um, if you knew me, was kind of a big deal when I was first going to conventions. I wasn't, I kind of forgot to get all my scalp trade signed, but, like, basically ever since, like, that convention, whenever he had a line, it would be super long, so it's like I almost could never get my scalp trade signed, so finally I lucked out and got into a short line with Jason Aaron, finally got my scalp trade signed by him. Kind of chat up the TV series a little bit, too. Uh, you know, just base-level stuff. Nothing, like, groundbreaking. Like, oh, man, uh, this character's gonna die in episode two. It's like, 
still kind of up in the air with it. Apparently, it's going to be on WGN for Chicago. And I am really curious to see what they do with that series, since it is still one of the best comics I've ever read. And that could be for an amazing TV series. I'm just kind of curious to see what they can all get away with. So that's still kind of up in the air, but that was a pleasure to uh, chat with him as well. So I'll just kind of leave this video on for you know, maybe in 30 seconds, maybe a minute, just so you can kind of see the various things uh, that I got on a signature and uh, just a little doodles I got. So anyway, thank you very much. If you stuck through this entire video, you are a trooper. If you uh, happen to have gone to Heroes Con as well this year, uh, feel free to post your haul or maybe like, I don't know, send a, I don't, a response video is still a thing. Do, do people still do response videos? Because that'd be kind of fun for this is like, you know, make a video of your Heroes Con haul and I guess like tag us or something. Not sure how that works anymore since uh, I haven't been a part of YouTube for a while. So yeah, thanks again for watching and I will see you later this week with my review of The Violence.